Resident Evil 4, <laughs> Resident Evil 4, three guys are reviewing Resident Evil 4. Hey, we agreed on the theme song, right? Uh, do we agree on that theme song? Yeah. Hello and welcome to The Retro Perspective. This is the gaming talk show where we discuss the past and the present of the gaming industry. This time I've, with me is Aaron and Hello. Josh. Hi. So this will be a three-part um, series. This is part one. <coughs> Turn your phone off. So this is going to be a three-part series. The first one, we're going to play Resident Evil 4. F- number one <laughs> is four. Number two is five. And number three is six. It's going to be like Star Wars. This is 2005. Na- we thought it was 1999, but then we thought, no, it's not. <laughs> it wasn't that it said long 1999 on the box. Yeah, it does say 99 on the box. <laughs> that was just the price. <laughs> I mean, I think to, yeah. to put into perspective how good Resident Evil 4 is, we need to first discuss Resident Evil. Yeah. So, in like, general. in terms of Resident Evil in general. So, you know, the Resident Evil series had progressed from, you know, very blocky... Oh, you were almost a Jill sandwich! Survival horror that was almost bordering on just utter ridiculous cheese. And it kind of become quite a really, like, good, gripping survival horror game mm. series yeah. that was then kind of leading itself towards more the action kind of side of gaming, I felt. You know, you can look at, like, Mercenaries in, like, Resident Evil 3. Mm-hmm. And then definitely as, like, Code Veronica. Yeah. Um, it was certainly kind of going more towards kind of the action style of gaming. Yeah, you can tell by the openings of Resident Evil 3 and Code Veronica that they yeah. were going for that because they've got very action-packed Yeah, definitely very sequences. action-packed. It was Code less, Veronica, what now? So less, yeah. less survival horror that kind of Silent Hill was starting to dominate and kind of more, all right, it's a kick-ass action movie in a zombie world. Yeah. So it was kind of getting more like that. So then Resident Evil 4 came out, new console, it's going Nintendo exclusive, and we're going over the shoulder. All the fixed camera angles that were in the previous Resident Evils are all gone. Um, so no more running. It's go behind the corner, wait five seconds. <laughs> behind the corner and from a weird angle, wait five seconds. Oh, there's the tyrant, I'm dead. <laughs> Less of that shit and more, you know, over the shoulder. So people, I don't think anyone really knew what to expect from this. I think it was kind of going to be like, whoa, Resident Evil's hitting the next gen. What's going to happen? Mm. So I think what we got was unbelievable this was the game that surprised everyone in terms of the package that gamecube had brought graphically i think yeah yeah i don't think certainly for me i hadn't seen anything this good on anything yeah definitely yeah, i think this game is the best on the gamecube in terms of graphics yeah but it also yeah. at the time overshadowed everything that the ps2 had yeah it really did yeah, yeah. yeah nothing were even close yeah absolutely blew me away yeah. um so as you were saying yeah what what was you, what were your kind of first impressions of resident Evil 4 when you bought it for the gamecube i didn't have a gamecube i was too fucking cool i had a ps2 and you borrowed my gamecube well we're not going to talk about that <laughs> yeah well yeah did ultimately to play it but, uh, <laughs> My favourite was Resident Evil 3 at the time. Yeah. And it still is in some ways, but obviously Resident Evil 4 is better. Objectively better. Yeah. Resident Evil 3's opening was always a massive thing for me because it started you off in that action-packed bit, but then it kind of died down for a while after that and sort of gradually built up the suspense. So Resident Evil 4 comes along and I think the opening has a perfect build-up. Like right from this very first house... That you go in, you you fight one zombie, and then you're like, okay, I've got I've got to grips with the gun controls now. I know what I'm doing. Let's see what we've got in the next scene, and then we go to the next scene, and it's the village. Yeah, I and think. Then it's just like, oh wow, and it's like wow, something, <laughs> something's wrong here. Something's yeah. going on seriously. What this game, what's so good about its opening for me is that it is so definitively Resident Evil. You're trapped in a house, guys walking, you know, this is a zombie like we've never seen before as well. Mm. So whilst it's very, very Resident Evil, it's clearly a step beyond what we've uh, what we've experienced in pre- previous Resident Evil it's games. It's a setting that we don't, we're not familiar with. Yeah, definitely. He's, the, the zombie's moving in ways we've not experienced before. Doesn't even really look like a zombie. So right from the bat, we know things are different. What it particularly says there, even you check the dead body in the house, the first yeah. zombie... He yeah. encounter. He he's says not a he's zombie. not a zombie. This is this is new. Yeah. He we've, is not a zombie. We've got humans attacking us. Yeah. We don't know what's going on here, Rainer. There's something, there's a secret here. 
we don't know what's going on. Leon Kennedy's strange. Leon Kennedy's the same as we are right now. He's like, <laughs> uh, excuse me, I'm used to fighting zombies. Yeah. Like this is this is different for me. Yeah. Great right there. Absolutely <laughs> love that. Yeah. What we've already learnt is that Leon is not the same Leon in previous games where Leon is, you know, it's as literally such rigid movements as just running and and and, and sideways walking and all that kind of thing. We've got he's diving out of a window. <laughs> Clearly, there's more move, uh, maneuverability involved in this game than there is in others. Mm. Right at the start as well, as soon as you start encountering these enemies, if you hit them in certain parts, you can see that Leon can interact with them. It can smack them down. You've yeah. got like physical melee moves in yeah. this game. I, th- I think I think this was one of the games really that paved the way for that type of gameplay. Actually, you've got a lot of games that came after this where you have that kind of interaction with your environment. Yeah, you definitely. Know, Gears of War type games, I think, took a lot from this type of game. Absolutely, yeah. Where you're directly interacting with the environment around yeah. you. Yeah. I guess there's no sex discrimination here. The game has a sense <laughs> of humour. <laughs> yeah, but imagine if in Resident Evil 5, they did like, Im- oh, I guess there's no race discrimination because <laughs> of the controversy. Because of the controversy of the race thing. <laughs> Just killing black people at will. Um... One thing I really, really like about this intro as well is that um, the game does not immediately Going throw you later. into a massive <laughs> right. fight. The game, it kind of, you know, you're walking on just on this very, very linear path. There is literally, it's literally a straightforward path, but it introduces several vital elements. First of all, that's checking your surroundings. Yeah. So in this game, it because there is so, ammo is so scarce and money and currency is a massive part of the game. You need to basically check boxes, you're smashing stuff open, you need to check everywhere. Jake just got caught there by... A bear trap just hidden in the grass mm-hmm. yeah. shows I'd, that I'd taken out two bombs, so I thought it was clear. But then the bear trap got me. Definitely. Now <laughs> those bombs were put. You know, there was no bit in this part of the game, at least, where Leon was under any pressure to walk into those trip wires. It was so very obvious that there was something there. And, and whilst at this point in the game, very easy to avoid. Later on in the game, very difficult. Very difficult to avoid when you're running away from enemies and you're not really sure exactly where you're going or where anything is. So, very, very good intro this, because it, it introduces yeah. you to the very important basic elements of the fighting system, while not giving you a very much of a challenge at all, because it's very simple to just keep moving. It introduces you in small small amounts to all these things that you're likely to encounter throughout the game. Exactly. So it's like almost having a training level, without making it as obvious and cheesy as a exactly. training level, you know, like someone Which... saying to you, Hey Leon, try pressing A to do this. Exactly. You no know, one ever says that to you, but it's introduced to you in a... In exactly. a natural way. I think it's good to point out as well the um, the change in the camera angle. Yeah, 100%. We're, we're no longer given this view of the whole sort of space. A, a major reservation you might have had coming into this game with the camera having moved from the fixed positions. Having a camera in a fixed position enables you to create scary moments in a game. What I feel like this game does is create scary moments far more organically than previous Resident Evils. The, you are now in full control of the camera, but you can only see straight ahead at any given point. Because we have to be so much more careful with our environments, as you can clearly see here in the opening scene, you're surrounded in a house. You, you saw a ladder go up upstairs. You saw I'm trying to come in through the bottom window. This means that there are enemies coming at you through all kinds of avenues here. It's not like people enemies are just going to come out of like a cupboard or something like that. And it's just like, oh, that was what was scary. It's the idea that there are so many enemies and they're all coming for you all the time from loads of different angles. It means that the intensity comes from really being in Leon's position. You're not just dealing with monsters anymore. These are almost people, tactically astute, the same as people are. And what's so impressive about this game is the AI. The AI. Yeah, fantastic. The way they move. Mm-hmm. The, the dodging your bullets. Which Absolutely. Is that never happened previously. Exactly. The, the, you know, ducking and diving, making things difficult for you, throwing axes. Completely. You know, being what? as intelligent as sort of half possessed, zombie ish type people would be expected to be. <coughs> it's pretty realistic, the AI, which is definitely the first time we've encountered that in a Resident Evil game. Mm hmm. Now, I can only assume that before this game was made, they were contempl- they they would not have thought to themselves, we're going to get rid of zombies. Mm. Like, surely. That would not... <laughs> it's not like the game was made and some guy was like, you know what, we're going to make a new Resident Evil. I'm getting rid of zombies. <laughs> and it's like, what? They've just been like, what are you thinking? This has to have been a decision made through development. I can only assume that they tried it with, with basic zombies and thought, this game's just too easy. We have too much of a range of motion. One thing that is introduced through this uh, new enemy type is the fact that sometimes if you want to shoot them in the head which has previously always been a very good yeah, thing in Resident th- Evil just in any game shoot something in the <laughs> face it'll die quicker yeah. yeah 
So it's kind. Of, that's kind of like number one rule is you shoot things in the head in all of video games, really. Oh, just in life. Certainly in police, <laughs> ac- police academy. Um, shoot him in the face. Definitely the right way to do uh, to go about it. But now we have this element of gameplay that is like, okay, you can shoot them in the head. It is usually effective, but sometimes that's going to be a really bad idea because then this thing bursts out of the head and it's a lot more difficult to fight those those specific enemies once that happens. In the previous Resident Evil games, they'd have a boss that's like the tyrant and uh, it's pretty much like the main boss you would fight throughout and it's like this, this, it's pretty much what would happen if the zombie thing went perfectly. You'd have this weapon. The whole reason that these, these zombies even exist is that there's the virus going around that was designed by the military to create these like super weapons that can say anything and they'll just wreck people's shit. It'll just proper mess you up. Um, but, but this game, it's kind of like everyone's got the capability of doing that. Everyone's got all the enemies you face have the capability of turning a little bit tyrant. And, um, and I really, really like the element of it. On harder difficulties, it happens a lot more often. I've, I've definitely found um, so it kind of makes it that every playthrough it doesn't even a game like Devil May Cry for example would have harder enemies earlier in the game whereas this does a really good job of it where it has just the same energy but a lot higher chance of the heart of um, them becoming a lot more difficult throughout yeah. uh, which I think <laughs> is a really really refreshing uh, part of it now, the, your general sort of zombie if you like changes throughout the game adapts yeah. to the fact that your weapons are getting better you should have upgraded things by this stage so you know they need to think of a way of keeping it fresh <coughs> making sure that you know things are not getting stale it's not getting easier as it progresses you don't want a game that gets easier as it progresses like, like every most modern game. games now exactly <laughs> you do not want that at all it should be getting harder if anything as it progresses or at the very least staying linear um, and this game I think does it really really well because what you have is you have your three different main sections of the game really the village the castle and the island and you face completely different enemies in appearance and in strength but they have quite similar characteristics you've still got your basic enemies like the Ganados um, and then in Ganados, the castle you've got your sort of priest type guys yeah zealots, um, your they, zealots. do they fire crossbows at you as well so yeah you do have some crossbow zealots as yeah. well which, which is a, a, another sort of really really interesting addition to Resident Evils really mm. because you never really had to deal with projectiles sort of projectile long range attacks and actually unbelievably dangerous in this game because you find yourself in situations sometimes where the guys with the crossbows in the castle are so far away that they're quite difficult for you to be dealing with really because you've also got enemies right on you there and that's where again another side of tactical gameplay comes in you know what are you going to do about that can you flash people get your sniper out take the crossbow guys out really quickly and then deal with the guys that are near you really yeah. really classic part of a game isn't uh, it? and then you progress onto the island progress, progress onto the island and, and you've got guys like fucking JJ. JJ he's got a massive gatling gun yeah he's big old machine gun. gatling gun he's not messing about there really he, well armed. it looks like Jax from Mortal Kombat you got, you've he's got, got a giant gun stun stun <laughs> batons They've got it all, you know, they, but the game, generally speaking, the enemies are wearing bigger armour, headshots aren't always going to work, they've got helmets on, yeah. just stuff like that that's really, really simple and most games do not do. And you've Instead, just... they'll rather have an enemy that just has more health and does more damage yeah. without actually improving the AI or making the tactics of how you actually go about the fight any different at all. Yeah, and this is to change, This is the vast majority of video games that do this. Resident Evil decided, oh, how can we make this game more difficult organically? And they did such a, such a good job with it. I mean, I'm not messing about. This is such simple gameplay, the, the um, elements, that Resident Evil 4 is just absolutely nailed. There's no excuse that all games are not built like this. All games are not structured this way. But the fact that Resident Evil 4 is, just a Nova game is, strangely, makes it such a satisfying experience from beginning to end. Not only have we already described how well the, the fights against the Ganados uh, are implemented, um, but it's not just that. There is huge action set pieces constantly in this game. Some taking the form of quick time events, others not though. So for example, we've just seen there um, a truck had pulled up um, and then, you know, with no warning, you just see a truck coming towards you and you're pretty much going to assume that, oh, well, if I don't really do anything right now, this truck is going to run my ass over because I'm on a huge, I'm on a narrow cl- cliff path and there's no way for me to escape it. I just need to shoot this truck and kill it as quickly as possible. Shoot mm-hmm. out the wheels or shoot out the driver. And, um, and you can do either. And you can do either. And it works. And it works because those are the two most sensible ways. 
and these are and this is definitely a game that feels very much like a Hollywood action movie. You know, he's saving the president's daughter. The storyline is set up in such a way that, you know, he's up against it. huge groups of enemies at once that are like massive shootouts. The game is like pretty much like any great Hollywood action sequence, except there's a million of them and there's just, <laughs> and they're always ace and you are in them. Now, for me, this is a really, really important thing to discuss when discussing Resident Evil 4 and what sets it apart from modern gaming and what sets it apart as just a, a truly, truly exceptional game. Because what's frustrating for me is that games nowadays have this obsession with being cinematic masterpieces. They have to be like movies. You see a trailer for a video game and it's like a movie itself. It doesn't even. It literally says, this is not respect reflective of gameplay. The game is literally selling itself on the idea that it's a story and it's a movie. Call of Duty, you know, never in an advert will you ever see it say like, um, ex you know, like the best first person shooter gameplay elements ever, you know, feel like you're in the battlefield. You know, it never ever highlights what's probably really good about the game. It never says like, seamless multiplayer excellence, you know, bet more game modes than ever before. It never says anything like that. It's just some, it'll just be some dickhead soldier, probably like Kiefer Sutherland or some major Hollywood actor who's just like, I remember being in the battlefield. I picked up my gun. And then it'll have like some guy who's like a big fat guy who looks like a normal guy. Then it'll have some hot woman who has never fucking played Call of Duty in her fucking life. And she'll be like, ha ha. And then it's like, they're all just like normal people who are soldiers. Now how that promotes a game is it insane to me the fact that you can literally say that this game is reflective of military combat mm. um, and you are, it's as if you are in the military murdering uh, murdering people and then that's a way to market a video game is bizarre to me but that's how they do it the pretty much games are trying to be like movies um, they don't even talk about gameplay that's never really a big part of it and yet all of these games will fucking fail at being like movies. All they will be are movies. Mm. All you will do is watch these games. Anything that's supposed to be a movie style element, it'll just be something you watch. Call of Duty story, um, single player story modes have never ever featured something close to an action movie, ever. It's purely cutscenes, or slowed down things where you go in and shoot people. Yeah. Or like, you know, the bit where you're walking through the terminal, I think, in Call of Duty 4, and it all kind of kicks off. Yeah. And it's just like... No Russian. But yeah, the Russian thing, yeah. And it's like, but mm. it, it's just... It, it's basically, this is an, a scene from a movie, but everything that's cinematic about it is cinematic. It's all just you walking through it. Whereas this game, just there... Truck's driving towards you. You've got to kill the driver. It wasn't like a cutscene where he shot the driver and he died. You had to physically do it. You were in the position of an action hero right there. Yeah. Bit beforehand, um, there is um, a, a carriage full of like explosive barrels that's just at the top of this hill and loads of enemies down below. You're going to approach it like you're an action movie star. Let's shoot this fucking carriage and send all these flaming barrels down to them and kill them all. Yeah. That makes you feel like you're in a movie more than anything else. More than actually watching a cutscene. <laughs> more than any of that kind of stuff. That makes you feel like you're in an action movie when you're causing the damage. The when you're doing it. stuff. It's, you're physically involved in it and you're ready to rock and roll. Every time you win one of these fights, yeah. you're like, fuck me, that was hard. Jesus Christ, how have I got through that? You're like, oh, how much ammo have I even got left? <laughs> because every fight takes out of you, then you you aren't picking up ammo off of characters. Other games will have it where you kill a load of characters, you're in a better position than you were when you went into the fight. <laughs> Games shouldn't do that. It no. should be, oh, you've had a massive fight, you're a lot worse off for it. Because guess what, you know, in an action movie, when was the last time you saw an action movie, for example, a character is in a massive fight against loads of people, kills them all, <laughs> and then it's like, Ooh, best just salvage all these weapons. Give me a sec. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, oh I have lots of guns and I'm armed to the fucking teeth now. You have the cave trolls, literally straight from Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I don't know what the hell they are. Like, there's literally no explanation as to why there would be this giant troll. It's not a person. It no can't be a person. Whatsoever. You encounter the same enemy, in fact. Yeah. It's always the same troll, but in very different situations. Yeah, a lot of the time, so the first troll you encounter... Um, wide rescued, open arena wide open arena if you rescue the dog at the start of the game this fight becomes half as difficult because the dog will come and help you it does a load of damage to it and you've, you've only got to take off half the amount of damage that you would have done which is really uh, good because what it tells you is that this enemy is a lot more difficult than, your, than what you're facing right there yeah. so it kind of lets you know that if you face this thing again and there's no dog you're in for a tougher fight yeah, than tougher. this time right? and that's exactly what you are in for because the next yeah. time you see the troll um, I believe is 
That's on your on way to getting into the castle, um, you encounter it in a sort of narrow gorge yeah. kind of thing, and there's giant rocks placed upon the gorge. Now, again, same enemy, but forcing you to think a bit differently because unless you how are you going to make it easier this time for how yourself? are you going to make it easier this time for yourself you know that there's ways of making this enemy easier we're not dummying down games <clears throat> that's what they're doing well you know they're forcing you to think about the game and that involves you then more in the game <clears throat> buy into the character more you you know if leon dies you die you know you do not want this to happen <laughs> that, at all you don't really die you don't you really don't die actually well, you... die <laughs> <laughs> well i've always played like that. <laughs> being serious you don't die <laughs> I've been like proper shit myself this whole time I've been watching this. I'm like, oh god, if he goes down, I'm not taking hold of that pad because I'm not going to get fucking killed. You see how I'm going now. <laughs> so Resident Evil, very, very well known for the, uh, you got the liquor, probably the most famous. Yeah, um, so. And that's not, you know, that's not a bottle of whiskey or something like that. That is a big monster <laughs> that will lick you to fucking death, mate, so take it seriously. Is the liquor in Resident Evil 4? Resident Evil 5, mate. Yeah. Resident Evil 5, they make reappearance. Yeah. Um, so you, but. Resident Evil 4 is all, but Resident Evil as a concept has always been known for monsters outside of just zombies. Yeah. Invented loads of different stuff. Evil dogs that attack you, which are also in dogs, this game. Dogs, absolutely. The scariest enemy oh, in yeah. Resident Evil you can ever hope to face. Man's best friend, turn evil. What could be more yeah. scary? It's You've terrifying. also, in this game, introduces <laughs> um, quite a few new enemies that fast, that are so, so well implemented with the gameplay mechanics. So that when the liquor is introduced in Resident Evil 5, it's it almost feels archaic compared to what they brought into this game. Yeah. So how does the control scheme work for you in this? Because we've discussed how the camera angle's clearly changed, uh, and that he's got melee attacks. You know, things are clearly different from previous Resident Evils. So we've discussed what's different. What's the same? The same is uh, the tank controls. Okay. Um, so what are you talking about there? So this, this is just a man. He's not a. He's not a tank, Jake. <laughs> I'm sure that most of you know what tank controls are if you're watching. Um, for a game like this, I always felt it, it. I always thought that it felt better to say, okay, I'm moving forward. If I press left, my character will turn left. And in, in this modern era, we have like literally no games that, that will ever use this control scheme anymore because it's deemed as like clunky and archaic. Yeah. What do you guys think about that? No, I don't. Do you disagree? I, I, I agree with you actually, Jake, on this point because yeah. I think. I think in particular, for certain games, I can see why it works better, but for a game like Resident Evil, where fear um, and tension are the main aspects of the game, really. You know, tension should build throughout the game. It should be constantly an experience where you feel on edge. Mm -hmm. I think that freedom of movement is too much of a step away from the traditional format of the games, where that was actually one of the reasons why you would be fearful, because if you encounter an, a scenario where you're up against many enemies, you know full well that it's not going to be as simple as just darting away and running around people, running rings around people. You don't want to be in a scenario where you've got sort of like one button Prince of Persia style <laughs> dodging kind of thing and that's not what this game is, you know, Leon is not a ninja. Yeah. That's not what how well, I mean, wait until the laser corridor because I'm pretty sure you're going to be amazed by some of the things you see there. So let's let's not let's not say Leon's not a ninja just yet. Okay, you know, let's just calm it down. I mean, from my perspective, in this game in particular, the tank controls work really, really well. And as said, it's because of the fear element of it. But that is not to say that you cannot create fearful environments using um, a control scheme that's different from this. It's just that in this specific game, it works so, so, so well because the AI is, devi is devised around it. And this will clearly be something that they'll have thought about deeply because It'll have been one of those things where, you know, they when you're changing the camera angle, you change everything else. They have a right button. They could have made it so that you can move while shooting, and I'm, I'm sure they will have gone over this and painstakingly decided that they're not going to do it. That they're going to keep the tank controls and yet, but just allow you to shoot all around you and be able to look all around you. So we've got a, a full third person um, targeting system, uh, but we still have the tank controls. And I feel like this works so much better in this game because the enemies are primarily melee related and also when you're trying to build the tension and you're running away from say the chainsaw guy, it's kind of like, you have to, it, it is how you say it, it's the, it changes how you have to approach the fights completely. The ammo situation as well, um, you know, there isn't obscene amounts of ammo in this game, there's enough, but there isn't obscene amounts, so 
you do need to be approaching fights tactically. It's not as simple as just, I'm going to stand and spray. You know, it's one of those things where a casual gamer might look at it and be like, why can't he shoot while moving? It's just ridiculous. It, you know, it'd be so much easier if he could shoot while moving. People might look at it and not quite understand that to be able to shoot while moving would completely change the dynamic of the whole game. Mm. Uh, and that it makes it so much better that you can't because it makes everything so much more tactical. That being said, you can still make a game where you can move in all directions, just look around you and everything like that, and it still be scary and it still be difficult. You just have to make it... You just have to make the game like that. The enemies have to fit that kind of control scheme. But in this game, they've really, really thought about how your character moves and how the enemies can interact with you. And I think that's what makes it so effective on so many levels, is that all the gameplay elements co converge to make for such a great experience. It's so well thought out how they move compared to how you move that it makes for such an incredible experience. Yeah. Person can move and shoot. If you're playing as a person, why can't you? <laughs> yeah, they could, but they could. But don't you feel that that's sort of like dummying down gaming a lot as well? Because could you really run and shoot accurately? No, you couldn't. Yeah. Not unless you were unbelievably skilled. And even still, you're not going to be able to shoot accurately mm. whilst moving like that. Most people, you need to stand. Whereas now in games, you can run and shoot and... The fact that you're running does not affect your ability to shoot yeah, someone it does. as to yeah, when you're stationary. That's really. a very good point. That's because not true. Nowhere near enough. That's a very good point, I think, because it's clearly easier to use a controller to move and shoot yeah. than to actually to move actually and, and shoot, shoot in real oh, right. life. Which Most... is why it does work in a lot of ways right. and it's still relevant. That's absurd. That's I'm amazing. an amateur, right? I'm, I'm an amateur murderer, personally. <laughs> I'm really, really bad at murdering people. You know, like, I've never even been able to pull it off. Never killed anyone. Certainly not while running. Well, definitely not while running. But not even while standing. <laughs> Rarely when sitting am I able to kill anyone. So, but, you know, in a game, you're playing commandos. You know, Leon's a special service agent. He's like, you know, he's, he's switched on. He is jumping out of windows. Leon is doing all kinds of stuff. Mm. The idea that he couldn't shoot while moving is preposterous. <laughs> and, if, and you're saying, oh, people are running around shooting like Madden games. That's just as well easy. It's not necessarily true. Certainly not in well-built games. Usually, running at full speed means that you sh your shots are in inaccurate and you can't really get a proper shot off and it don't work properly call of duty think about it you aim and then the character slows down and it can kind of slowly strafe while shooting it's not the same as being able to run and gun at a, an effective level so main, games do implement an aiming mechanic that does slow your character down dramatically they just can move at the same time mm. that's the only slight difference imagine if this, imagine how different this game would be if leon could move slowly while aiming probably wouldn't be that much different if you could move slowly while aiming, how yeah. much different would it be really be? It wouldn't be that it much different. Yeah. It wouldn't be that much different, would it? But at the same time, so so you can't say that it wouldn't yeah. that it, it couldn't work because other games have managed it. So yeah, moving on to something that for me is one of the greatest aspects of the game and something that works absolutely fantastically. The merchant. Mm -hmm. And the way that currency works in the game and upgradables and the way this progresses throughout the game. What I love about the Merchant is, and I, I, just to draw back on a previous video about Metal Gear Solid 4, um, that they don't explain anything about him. It's just a way to get an action-style currency system into the game. Um, he's pretty much, he literally, he could be a robot. He could literally just be like, action vendor, buy robot, buy guns here. He could literally just say <laughs> that. Hopefully he's a bit more of a yeah. three-dimensional character. Well, that. exactly. They didn't, you know, they didn't take my advice on the uh, fun <laughs> robot angle. They decided, oh, just have like a British guy instead. And I was like, oh, do what you want then, Capcom. <laughs> uh, if you don't want my robot idea, I'll sell it somewhere else. If you don't want my, if you don't want my hip black guy idea, I'll sell it to, <laughs> sell it to economy and see what they can do with it. Um, so, but you know, for example, in Metal Gear Solid 4, they basically invent a whole character that is Drebin just to have a currency based system in the game. Here, they're just like, you know what, we cannot come up with a conceivable reason why this guy is in the game. <laughs> so they just kind of make him a fun, ridiculous character. It's just weirdly British, you know, it's just like, yes. got a bizarre voice that just doesn't fit the game at all. He's not Spanish. Why is he even there? Mm, Who is it? And like, he's just, I'll, but yeah. it works really, really well because it's just so weird. Like, there's no reason. You just literally go around collecting potatoes. Potatoes. Like, you collected an, an old, obsolete and I, 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 I remember really whether potatoes would have been the currency at the time, 2005. I'm pretty sure Spain were in the European Union at this point in time. <laughs> so jewel-rich is this nation that they are literally hanging off of trees. Literally, just jewels. It's like, we've got we've got so many of them. Throw a fucking spinel. So I don't need a spinel. Throw it at this tree, I will. So I don't need it. Hide it in a lamp. <laughs> what a shit lamp. Fuck Stick it. Stick it in a it bird's up. nest. Stack it up. Throw them in a bird's nest, because I can't. I've just got too many of these. It's worth mentioning also, as well, it's a 
you know, it's a good job that the birds in England are not like this because look at all the money these <laughs> birds have got. We would have no money left. Recession. Know what to do with Goldman Sachs. <laughs> Principally, anyway, what I really like about this whole thing is that the currency system is expertly demonstrated in this game. Megasly Ford did a shocking job. This game does an unbelievably good job of having a currency system in the game. First of all, as Jake mentioned, the treasure system. Now, actually finding all the treasures in this game is not easy. Oh. I've, I rarely have done it without using... I've never done it without using a walkthrough, for example. I've never found all the treasures in the game because they are really well hidden. Um, so, but it is something that you learn very early on is that you're not only looking out for your environment for traps or weapons or enemies You're also looking out for these treasures that you can then sell to the merchant to make even more money Because the general your bread and butter per se is they're not gonna get you the big guns you want You gotta find the treasures But there's also a very intelligent system incorporated into that and that the treasures you can actually improve So you might find a few jewels and whatnot But then you can combine them with some kind of like crown that's for some reason there and make an item that sells for even more. I think that's a really, really satisfying concept and it's something that is prevalent throughout this whole Resident Evil 4 system, is that just jumping out on an item right right at the start of the game is not always the best way to go. The game always gives you choices. Yeah, and definitely. And that is what's so great about that. And this fits in with the whole RPG element that the game has. So, for example, again, it is not just that buying, as soon as a new gun becomes available, it might not be the best idea to buy it immediately because you can either buy new weapons or you can upgrade the ones that you currently have to make them more effective. So it kind of becomes a choice of, well, which gun's the best? And you only really discover that playing the game once, probably twice really, to get a sense of, to get the final upgrade on most of the weapons that usually have unique benefits. So even the basic handgun that you start the game with, if you can max that out to full, it has benefits to it that the other handguns don't have. So it goes to show that the RPG elements are so well implemented mm. that really there is no best gun per se. It's yeah. kind of yeah. how you like to play the game. And it, it makes it so that no gun becomes obsolete as well, yeah. which is Absolutely, so good. Yeah. Absolutely. Because as we were saying in the Metal Gear Solid thing, it's just so funny that this yeah. has come up. Like, all the guns are pretty useless. Yeah, there's Whereas pretty much one game, best gun. Every yeah. gun is so useful. And, yeah. And you can use them Absolutely. all. Absolutely. Even though, you know, some guns, you probably are going to go for pure power, generally speaking. So yeah. one handgun might be the best. Oh. Or you might go for fire rate. So yeah. you can you can shoot more bullets. Um, so you can shoot bullets quicker. Reload faster. Get exactly. Get yourself out of sticky situation. Absolutely. So it all depends on how you want to play the game. Now, that might seem really, really simple. Like, well, yeah, obviously they do it like that because that's just how you do an RPG boosting upgrade system where you buy new weapons. You could not be more wrong. So few games have this have implemented this as well as Resident Evil 4, and it's Absolutely. appalling. Absolutely. It's genuinely <laughs> terrifying how incapable game developers are at achieving something that Resident Evil 4 did absolutely effortlessly. Absolutely. Games just don't seem to be able to do this. Even, even you know, straight up RPGs, Go weapons become obsolete so quickly. Yeah. You're just dropping knives, you're dropping guns. It's like, you know, look at, for, for example, Fallout. Um, you know, so many guns that you encounter in that game are so useless. Mm. You are literally just buying guns to either scrap them or sell them. Mass Effect is appalling for it. Just get, <laughs> you know, these games are pretty much bigger, the more of an RPG than bloody Resident Evil 4 is. So Resident Evil 4 is not actually the first Capcom game to do this system. Um, Dino Crisis 2 had an action system that was very, very similar to Resident Evil 4. Yeah. It had um, stations that were set up throughout the game where you'd go and buy them. Dino Crisis 2 is almost more of a predecessor to this game than, than and almost any Resident Evil mm -hmm. in terms of it was the first um, <clears throat> uh, survival horror, the, the Capcom style shooter, to incorporate this whole action system where you buy weapons as opposed to finding them throughout the game. Now, you might say that this takes away from Resident Evil 4 or it's not true to the Resident Evil feel of things but frankly I don't really agree with that. I really like the way that weapons are introduced. Um, it's really staggered. You know, you don't have access to everything right away but what's great about the way this works is that the game does not become easier the more weapons you have access to. The more you gain access to more weapons, and it's always very exciting whenever the merchant's like, got some new things in stock, stranger. Um, the way the rocket launcher works in this game is a one-shot kill. You basically buy it to make the game easier for yourself. Mm -hmm. It gives you an easy mode way out to defeat 
um, certain enemies. So you generally save it do for you, boss fights. Do you have to pay real money for that though? Like it's is best. it a microtransaction? What's that in terms of? Oh, so you you pay so you, you pay real life money yeah, you and can, then you get a rocket. What's launch great about what's game. great about Resident Evil Four is that it incorporates real life currency <laughs> into the currency in the game. You can only have access to so many pesetas through the game. If you want more, you have to buy. You, you can buy one hundred thousand pesetas for ten pounds. Um, that's what makes Resident Evil Four so good. Because real life... No, I'm kidding. It's stupid as fuck. <laughs> it does, yeah, a great point there, Jake. If this game was made today, almost <laughs> definitely that would be a thing, wouldn't it? So you might want the rifle because you're encountering a lot of enemies that are fighting you at a distance. Or you might want the machine gun because you're getting um, caught up with a lot of enemies at close range where you also might like the shotgun. What's so excellent about Resident Evil 4 is that you can't have it all because the inventory system is so, so excellently used. Stolen mm-hmm. from like Diablo, I believe, or like RPGs of that ilk. It is very RPG-like, yeah. Very, very yeah. RPG-like in terms of every item taking up a, a, an amount of space and it's all designated into quadrants. Yeah. yeah. Now, what works for me and what I absolutely love about this, app, this system is not only how it affects the way you play in the game, so ammo boxes take up certain amounts of space, grenades are a one-shot item, so you can't just carry endless amounts of grenades on you that make the game really easy Um, every item has a really appropriately it's really appropriately sized in the attaché case um, depending on how usable it is the rocket launcher is enormous pretty much means you can't carry a rifle with you or you're certainly not going to be able to carry all the guns at the same time but if you feel like you need it then you might be able to sacrifice one of those weapons to keep carrying it by selling it to the merchant and buying it back later if that's what you want to do might cost you some coins might cost you some money but you need to make room for it if you're going to do it. Now, at the same time, what's also great about this inventory system is that it is so similar to previous Resident Evils. It's not like we're breaking the mould, it's just evolving on what was already in the early Resident Evils, where you had eight spaces and a machine gun takes up as much of as, as much as an ammo clip. <laughs> and it kind of doesn't really make any sense. Yeah, yeah. it was really harsh, like, yeah, in the early Resident Evils. exceptionally yeah. harsh, yeah. but... So in this way, it's like, right, let's not get rid of the inventory system that we used to have in the Resident Evils. Let's just evolve upon it. Let's improve it, make it more usable in the game that we're making right now. That's what's so impressive about it for me. You might have access to all these weapons, but you're never really in a position to use them all at once. And that's what's so fun about it, because you might decide that on another playthrough, you're going to really stick to the TMP and improve it. Mm -hmm. And that changes the whole way that you play the game. If you're very stupid, you would be choosing to do that. (laughs) TMP being, without doubt, one of the worst weapons in the game. What I like about the inventory system is that it kind of turns into a game in itself. Yeah. Like, actually, because you, you can, you can move. <laughs> Tetris style. Yeah. Yeah. Things around. Because you can move everything around in your attaché case, like, you, you can actually make room for other things. Yeah. How you... can I make room for this rocket launch? <laughs> yeah, That's exactly. Sick. Imagine you... Leon's literally sat there and it... like, okay, move this <laughs> yeah, here. Exactly. Oh, it's not fitting in. <laughs> oh, right, okay. <laughs> if you're really desperate, you can actually move things around. And yeah, that becomes like a meta game. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, a little bit of it. It's, 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 it's part, part of the tactics of Resident Evil. Yeah. Yeah. Where you're coming from, knowing where, where is, you're yeah. going to be yeah. in the next few areas and thinking, yeah. okay, I'll take that with me. Definitely. Absolutely. Maybe I don't need this. This There's a the certain moment. art form to it, and the better you get at the game, the better yeah. you manage, you're able to manage it. Absolutely, yeah. I wouldn't say it's become a, a meta game as such, but what is good about it is that it's like um, you get a sense of satisfaction from it, bizarrely. Yeah. You genuinely yeah. do get a sense of satisfaction Getting from arranged having arranged having perfectly, it. combining all the ammo together and all that kind of thing. You do get a sense of satisfaction from it, which is bizarre, yeah, but yeah, it is true. Yeah. And then you pick up a few eggs, and it's like, oh, it's messed up all my yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so you think, why have I even carried all this stuff? You can't just grab anything you want you've got to get it out throw it at someone then get rid of it. <laughs> exactly <laughs> they make them very expensive you can upgrade the size of the case throughout yeah. the game but it's very expensive it's one of the more expensive items but getting a new case and that again forces you to make very sort of integral decisions to how you're going to play mm. the game because do you spend nearly all of your pesetas on a bigger case so that you can in the long run hold more maybe more herbs more grenades that type of thing or do you upgrade your weapons and stick to a smaller case mm. and, you know, take comfort in the fact that you're going to kill people easier? So in theory, you won't need that many herbs, you won't need as many grenades. Mm. Again, just giving you lots and lots of decisions to make throughout the game rather than just doing everything for you and babying you through the game. You've got to make those decisions and that's what's I feel inherently 
Resident Evil about it. Absolutely. Because yeah. That, that is the way Resident Evils have always been. Yeah, because you there was always those moments in the other Resident Evils where you had an item and you're like, I really want this item, but I'd have to get rid of something Absolutely, else yeah. to, Absolutely. to get that item. Absolutely. Now this is I think it's very common in most RPGs that you have to like drop an item or anything like that. But Resident Evil does it exceptionally well and it, it all kind of feeds into the survival horror aspect of it because it's kind of like you're out here on your own. You're, you've got to manage what you take with you and you might make the wrong decision. It might not be the best idea but you've just got to stick with it. I know loads of times when I was playing Resident Evil 4 and I got into like a bad situation and, all, and I had no grenades left. I was running really low on ammo and you're kind of just trying to like keep yourself going. Because you've made bad decisions in terms of what what items I've left behind. I bought the TMP and it went horribly wrong. <laughs> you've, you've made poor decisions, so you kind of need to. That, so you're kind of begging for the next merchant where you can kind of restock on everything, and you're really kind of looking forward to it. It worked exceptionally well. So the storyline, yeah. Um, President's daughter has been kidnapped by the Los Illuminados, who are a Spanish cult. Uh, Sadler's, Sadler's, I'm pretty confident Sadler's grand plan is to infect her with the Plagueis, send her back, mind control her, use her to infect the president with it, and then take over the world using yeah. the American president uh, as his puppet. This poses the the problem. She's got to, you know, get at the president and She's his daughter. Him. She's his daughter. <laughs> she is, yeah, but you is know, that why I'm not hugging you, gonna bitch? Be like, yeah. it's gonna be, she's gonna, you know, not say anything. We've seen with Leon that the Plagueis doesn't take hold. So gonna wait away. until it takes so hold. So just gonna exactly. So they can't. So he's gonna get injected. It. They can't detect. He's gonna realize he's been away. injected and then just be like, oh, I'm not gonna get that checked out. <laughs> Ashley Graham is in charge of foreign policy uh, <laughs> with the United States. She's gonna give. Island Illuminados, a um, billion dollars. <laughs> Sadler's going to then use that money to find to refinance his Plagueis initiative, get some better doctors, better medical facilities, really start putting this into water supplies and shit like that. So, uh, you know, realistically, the plan is actually pretty much foolproof. Um, no, but He's going to use this to finance more statues, more robotic <laughs> statues, and more research into stone robotics. <laughs> So the story's obviously a bit cheesy, but, yeah. you know, it's, um, it's we're, we're dealing with, You know, we're dealing with zombies here. We're dealing with zombies and yeah. viruses and parasites. Yeah. It doesn't have to be, like, a masterpiece. Absolutely not. Um, but what one thing we were saying was it was funny that, like, the village is, like, semi-realistic, and then once yeah. we get into the castle, <laughs> that's where it just gets um, just massive amounts of cheese. It just becomes obscene. I mean, this maniacal, vertically challenged Spanish lord yeah. of this region. You know, he's, he's living in this unbelievably huge castle. It really is unbelievably huge like, as well. Just unbelievably huge. It goes so on for big, about four so, hours. So big that he's commissioned a tram system within yeah. the within the castle to get tram, around. Tram in the castle. It's understandable because he does have, you know, it's, it's going to take him a while. He's a small guy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, You've got the room with a giant statue of Salazar yeah. that is robotic and able to move in one direction and run down this giant hole that seemingly was only made for this robot to run down. Yeah. <laughs> very, very bizarre. I mean, um, how did that conversation go? Salazar approaches Sadler, who's, I'm guessing, the man with all the money. Yeah, the man in pretty charge much the money man manager. Oh, probably, yeah, yeah, you know, probably. Sadler, you know, I've, uh, I've been thinking, you know that big room in back at Castle? Yeah, yeah. You know, no, I've room. been thinking what we're going to do with it, you know... We thought I about was, tennis courts. I was thinking, um, yeah, probably just some kind of torture chamber, um, yeah. just to fuck people up if they get out of line. Why? What have you got, Salazar? Well, you, you know, treasure there? well, I was thinking to myself, you know, why not have a giant robotic statue of myself? <laughs> yeah? With, like, a runway for it to run down. All oh, right. What? What's the purpose? Why is it robotic? Well, we could potentially, <laughs> you know, I can think of many uses for this. We could get... <laughs> If any American agents ever happen to come into the castle, <laughs> this would be the perfect way to trap them and finish them off. Um, oh, that's delicious, Salazar. I love the uh, the narcissistic edge to your plans. You always have a way of getting your own image into the ways you like to butcher and murder innocents. Uh, yes, we'll do it. That's how the conversation went. It had to have done. Why else would it have a gigantic statue? Uh, my favourite room in the castle is the, um, the hellish dragon pit, where... Uh, Salazar has decided that um, just in case anyone gets out of line, he's going to build a room where the floors 
cannot be seen. Uh, fire is everywhere. Um, and huge dragon heads are breathing fire and turning uh, at all of the angles. Basically, every now and then, covering off the path with flames. But every now and then, allowing people to run through. Uh, <laughs> Hanging by precariously weak chains. Oh, which yeah. Can be broken with a broken with a single handgun bullet. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think somebody was watching a little bit too much Takeshi's Castle at the time. <laughs> Maybe went a little overboard with it. I mean, what was the um, thing behind that? Oh, um, sadly, you know, you know that room at the back of the castle. Oh that? yeah. <laughs> you know, we were talking about this uh, yearly obstacle course games that we were going to be. Oh holding, yeah, love the Zealot. Gan- love the, the Ganados Zealot. Olympics. Oh yeah. In fairness, I don't think Sadler knows about any of this. <laughs> I think. <laughs> no, no, no. I think. It's the... like that weird obsession, you know, that kind <laughs> exactly. of like weird sadistic thing that people do behind closed doors. And exactly. Don't, don't even tell the best friends about. Sadler's like, "How's the castle coming along? Yep, yeah, don't bother visiting. Really? Oh yeah. Why? What are you doing? How? How is that? Um, How's the five million pesetas I've got, by the way? Because um, what have you have you been? Yep, everything's improved. Yep. So have you put guns and stuff? Because I've got guys with guns here, just in case the Americans come. Yep, got guns, got guns. Yep, got all kinds of guns. And the best part of the storyline by a mile is the reintroduction of Ada from Resident Evil Two. Yeah. So Leon and Ada's storyline in Resident Evil Two was really, really well done. And uh, and if you ever got the um, what was it called, Wesker's, the Wesker Diaries or something? There's a DVD you can get where Wesker basically unveils his evil <laughs> plan and how he's actually involved in everything and it came with Code Veronica X on the PS2. I still have this DVD and Wesker explains basically the whole plot of Resident Evil and how it all actually makes sense, just in case you were wondering. Yeah, yeah it all makes sense, idiot. Yeah, it really all does. And then he also, when Ada's, you think Ada has died in Resident Evil 2 and he's like, I got to Ada before anyone else. She will prove very useful in the future. And then it's like, oh my god, foreshadowed it, because she's back in Resident Evil 4, she's super powered, just like Wesker, and she's proper awesome. Mm. It's like, and then her and Leon having like a nice sexual chemistry, fun like rival dynamic, she's turning up occasionally saving him. She's not a sexual like, time. She's not a damsel in distress or anything like that though, she's a very like strong female character in herself. Really adds to everything that's going on in the game. It's a really, really nice storyline dynamic. One thing that I always felt was a bit disappointing about this Resident Evil was the ending. Yeah. In general. Oh, like, the riding off into the sunset. She's going to shag him. Yeah, like. riding yeah. off into the sunset mm. on a... Um, jet ski. Jet ski. Yeah. <laughs> jet ski. <laughs> Throw off from that. But there is, pure, there pure on his way to Malaga. Yeah, I really do think <laughs> that it would have benefited from a bit of like a Metal Gear Solid 3 type thing where... Leon goes back. Yeah, you see him you at the see, end and they're getting see, deposed. Yeah, and stuff. what yeah. happens afterwards. Yeah, that kind of probably would have been nice. And you see a full model of Hunnigan. Yeah. And that, that's where the hidden uh, yeah, exactly. you know, costume could a come in. A 007 <laughs> James Bond type scenario exactly. with Money Penny. He yeah, goes back yeah, to the exactly. office. He's Hunnigan's at the exactly. office. Hunnigan's like, nice, How's it going, Hunnigan? nice to meet you in person, Mr. Kennedy. Likewise. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, um, and they should have been like, so uh, you and the president's daughter, anything happened there? Oh, you know she's too young for me, Hunnigan. <laughs> Besides, I like the more intelligent type. Secretary Glasses. Type. <laughs> I go for the more intelligent woman. I felt it was reasonably satisfying. <laughs> it's, yeah. That, so that it's, it's sort of like it's set up another game. You yeah, know, West definitely. Get, and they had to get away with the Plagas. Yeah. You kill Sadler. This game's boxed off then. It feels, yeah. you know there's something that's going to follow on. It feels very much like this game's very kind of separate from the other storylines. It strengthens Leon's character massively by making him a lot more important. You know, we've seen... He, he's pretty much the secondary character in Resident Evil 2. In this one, it's all about Leon. A lot, All the bad guys are killed in this. It teases the whole Wesker um, situation so that we know in future Resident Evils, Wesker's clearly going to become a, a bigger part of it. Um, and generally speaking... I just like how this is more of kind of like, it is almost like a James Bond style storyline. Yeah. It is kind of like placing Resident Evil in a situation it's never really been in. An escort mission. Yeah. Which is basically where not you have. Where you are picking up <laughs> prostitutes. Um, so in Grand Theft Auto, this is not really, GTA. Yeah. it's not a Grand Theft Auto escort mission. Although they do have those. Yeah. And I'm sure that games have done this before, and games have definitely done it after Resident Evil 4. Yeah, and none of these games have done it anywhere near as good as what they do in Resident Evil 4. Every single other game I've played with an escort mission or anything like this, I think I've hated it. Yeah, generally escort missions are very, it. very frustrating parts of the game. Yeah. Metal Gear 3 when you get Ava at the end of it, and the most effective way to get through the section is to knock it's her out and drag her. <laughs> yeah, it's, usually, it's usually because not really a good shortcomings thing. in the AI, and it really yeah, it usually is. that ruins it. 
And oh. generally, the games aren't really built to have a mission like that almost. Yeah. It's kind of something that's kind of tacked on. So either they're slowing you down way too much or they're becoming too helpful or they're almost too difficult to protect mm. and dying way too easy. Or the AI is trapping themselves or in like things yeah. and it generally becomes very, very frustrating. Um, How, whereas, so, whereas in, in uh, <laughs> Resident Evil 4, Ashley has a brilliant AI. When you aim towards her, she'll duck so you can shoot at people behind her. She has her own health bar. You can choose to heal her whenever you want. Yeah. Everything that they did with this escort part of the game was to make things easy for you to control what she's doing yeah. and and basically stop her from dying. Yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, it adds such an interesting part to the gameplay dynamic because no longer are you just worried about yourself. By the time you get her, you're pretty much starting to handle these Ganados quite well. You kind of just t you're taking them out. You kind of you're causing them some real problems. Now with Ashley, you've got another problem because these guys can attack her. And also try and carry her away, which is an instant game over if you mess it up. You've, you've got, also got to watch got out for the environment. Traps, exactly. Uh, you've got you've also traps she can also walk. You've into. got to watch out for the environment. And Leon's just very happy if it's like actually getting that bin. It's like, oh my god, there's a mutated corpse of a dog in here. Get in the fucking bin, Ashley. I'm looking for treasure. I need Pesadas! Yeah. Very much a Do you have any idea Pirate how many Pesadas there are hanging around here? <laughs> We're gonna get paid from this job. No, but it, but all in all, the Oscar mission is exceptionally done. But there are lots of nice little Easter eggs. The way Ashley moves is very, very well designed. Uh, the way the character moves is very, very intelligent. She moves like she would. She's annoying and female. It's kind of like Shuri in Resident Evil 2 when she's really annoying. But at the same time, it works really, really well. She doesn't slow you down ever. She never gets caught behind anything. It's never like incredibly frustrating. But... It's really important to know where she is at all times, and it adds such a great dynamic to the gameplay. Absolutely. It's just far and away the best escort mission in gaming history. You send her up a ladder first. If Leon tries to look at her, she'll be like, Leon, stop looking at my ass! Oh, you pervert! Yeah, she'll be like, oh, you're such a pervert, Leon! And it's like, all right, love. She's very much understandable. Exactly. It's like, put on some trousers then! Why are you wearing a skirt? Well, she is wearing trousers in this outfit. Well, yeah, well, good, but she, I mean, now she's got cleavage out. It's like, come on, Ashley. Yeah, that's true. I mean, even this. <laughs> even oh, this. yes, gratuitive <laughs> cleave shot. Oh, I didn't yes. realise the camera angles had been set up for yes. this. Like, so until, like, when now she's in this outfit, you're so like, oh, much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bonus treat for me. Unbelievable. Um, two roots. So, so uh, this is a cool part of the game, actually. This is the one with the troll with the boulders. Mm, or you go and fight the Bella sisters with the chainsaws. Yeah. Yeah. Take the troll though because <laughs> it's, it's much easier and we're not getting the treasure. We will deploy a large number faster. of Ganardos in one of the routes to ensure that they will not step by us. For the other route, we shall leave the task to El Gigante. <laughs> Whichever <laughs> route they take, the agent will never leave her alive. It, not with the girl at least. It's as if they've put this here for like public information. <laughs> <laughs> We've put two trolls on one. It's route. like next to some pre owned for sale stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pitchfork for sale. <laughs> Five pesetas, hardly used. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly bloody, hardly used. <laughs> It's but it's really. I'm glad it was there. Be a public information. You should walk in by one day. <laughs> planning on a trip to the lake with the kids. And like, oh, well, Gigante has been deployed on that route. Better go the other way. <laughs> So, as well as having exceptional mini-bosses um, that um, regularly improve and get harder as the game goes on, um, but enemies that you fight more than once, the game also has exceptional boss fights. Yeah, so there's the big fish to start off with, yeah, which yeah. I really like as a boss fight because yeah. it's at the start of the game where you don't have a load of ammo, um, so they kind of thought to themselves, oh, how can we have a massive enemy that you have to fight and kill, but without having a lot of ammo? It's also... Um, the first fight where the quick time events uh, come into play. Now, what Resident Evil 4 does really, really well is something that most games have started to do, but none of them do even slightly good, even a little bit, <laughs> um, which is quick time events. Now, quick time events are the worst things ever in the history of life. Um, but Resident Evil 4, <laughs> because it's so fucking good, because it's so fucking good is this game, somehow does a really good job of it, because it implements them really, really well. Uh, big cheese. Very much a classic Resident Evil fight, so big enemy, ultling towards you, 
hit it as hard and often as you possibly can and try and stay out of the way of it. Yeah. You've got the two levels, so yeah. you can go up to the top level, but he can, he can, easy, jump up he can well. easily get up there, yeah. so it's more of a yeah. threat than You also have to fight enemy. the boss from the air, so weapons on the ground, so grenades aren't particularly effective against him, um, which is really quite a cool thing because they, they've they been causing a lot of damage to the other enemies that you've faced so far. Yeah. So to not be able to use them against it makes it a tougher fight. So you kind of need to rely more on your handgun and the guns that you have. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, it's a really, really solid first major boss fight. But more than that, we've seen the character quite a few times throughout. Yeah. It's built his character up it's quite well that he's the leader of the area. And defeating him really signals a shift in the tone of the game. You're going on to the next area and it feels like you've really accomplished something having beaten that boss. Mm -hmm. Then the second level, you have two excellent boss fights there as well. So the main characters that you've seen are Salazar, who's incredibly annoying. He's this small little man <laughs> who is causing all kinds of problems. He also has two big bodyguards with him um, who are very well established. You know, they look like they can cause some shit. Um, and you know they can cause some shit because Salazar sends one of them after you in probably the most intense or at least scary boss fight in the entire game yeah. which is against what I believe is called Vidago is it? Some, something like that like Vidago, Vidago or, or is more commonly known as the name as, of one of the bodyguards yeah, yeah, yeah. his right hand man more commonly known as the right hand man yeah. <laughs> um, a fight where very much relies on quick time events this thing will attack you and an incredibly randomly. difficult fight it well, is really really tough I mean, yeah. you either have a lot of ammo at this point in the game yeah and you can beat him, maybe. Yeah, if you've got a lot of ammo... Oh, you don't, and you just simply can't. You've got to wait for the lift to come. No, no. You can't beat him. Yeah. You just chuck things over, freeze him, yeah. do what you can. But and you've got to get out of there. There's no way you're going to kill but him. you just got to survive. Now, that's a really, really nice feature because it really drives home how dangerous this enemy is. It also drives home how dangerous Salazar is because he has this enemy working for him completely like as one of his like slaves and he has another one right next to him as well <laughs> so he's not messing about he sent this one after you and you barely survive it or you can just about kill it but a very very good fight because essentially it requires you to be to use all of the environment again to your to your advantage then salazar now so <laughs> admittedly this is the point where i usually use the rocket launcher yeah i never beat salazar, salazar fight. Fight. i never use yeah, it yeah, because i think the salazar fight is probably the most difficult fight in it now Salazar I think is the best established villain in terms of when you get to him you really want to kick his head in because he's pretty sure he's killed Lewis. Yeah. Um, he's just causing you nothing but grief the whole time. He's proper messing with you, he's taunting Leon all the time. He's like, well Mr. Kennedy, you'll never find me. <laughs> he's basically been a little shit. So when you find him you're like, right you fucked your little gimp. And then he's like, well Mr. Kennedy. I guess it's time to meet your end. <laughs> and he's like, fucking, what are you on about? It's quite difficult to tell if he's actually a little boy, Salazar. It could be a weird little creepy boy. It could be a little boy. Yeah, 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 maybe. Yeah, um, but anyway, so he gets... So, you're thinking, you know, I've got him, you little shit. Then suddenly, oh no, he's been absorbed by a gigantic monster plant. Not what we needed. And yeah, definitely, it's a very good opportunity to use the rocket launcher. But you also find a rocket launcher in the castle. Just very, very intelligent gameplay design. That's, they give you one for free. And if you're wise, you're going to save it and save it. So when you get to Salazar, you're thinking, this is the biggest thing I've ever fought in my life. I'm going to use the rocket launcher on it. <laughs> and if you do, you've just killed it. Yeah. So it's a, it's a way of tapering the difficulty of the game. Absolutely. For anyone yeah. to be able to enjoy it, then, you know, you can make the game a bit yeah. easier. Because but as long as you've got that rocket organic launcher. Organic exactly. way that makes so sense. You might choose, I'm not going to use a rocket launcher because I want the challenge, and that's completely and utterly fine. Rather, the rather than the route that a lot of games take nowadays by just dummying down the fight yeah. to make it easy enough that anyone could actually do it by just spraying bullets into something. Mm -hmm. Rather than doing that, it's giving you the option to play the game how you want to play it. 100%. The, the first fight, knife fight the with fight Krauser. Fight Krauser is absolutely immense. Krauser's a great character in this game. Really, really intriguing character because he's quite similar to Wesker, but he's, a, he's a, just an absolute head case. Um, so his character's really intriguing because he's basically what Leon would be if he was an absolute arsehole. Um, <laughs> like a, a military man, a rival, really. <clears throat> And that's what we've never had in a Resident Evil game before, and not even really since, because I don't see Chris and Wesker really having that kind of relationship. Um, now, Krauser, you've encountered him already in a really excellent cutscene quick time event, um, Fantastic. which is like a One really, of the best really quick time event I've ever encountered really in any really good, game. It? It's really ever. good, yeah. The only negative is if you lose the quick time event, it's a game over and you have to try again. At the same time, 
all that happens is you start the cutscene again. Yeah, it's and not a problem. It's always intriguing to see what the next part of the fight is, kind of thing. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I never, I never felt this is really annoying. I just want to get on with the game. Yeah. Quick time events by that time are already long, long established as an, an aspect of the game. Um, it's not like Bayonetta where they're really clunkily kind of put in, mm. and if you get them, the timing on them is impossibly difficult to catch, mm. um, and. The, everything. If you're quick enough, you'll complete the quick time event, and it's not. Yeah, they got it dead right, didn't they? I mean, it, yeah. it, <laughs> I died a couple of times the first time going through it. Yeah, it just because you're just not expecting things, and it, it's it's not so easy that you know anyone could do it easily. But throws you an outfit, if you're time, not on it. At the same it. time, it's not you know. It's not impossible. Five percent of game is going to be able to complete yeah, it's this. Not like, it's, and the thing is, at the time that this came out. Quick time events weren't a thing, really. Yeah, they're not massively. So, not massively. So, this was one of the games that definitely pioneered. Yeah. Yeah. And because you weren't so used to it, it, it wasn't as big of a drag if you yeah, did lose it. Exactly. Whereas nowadays, it's just like, yeah, I've done a quick time Most event games are very millions of yeah. times. But they're also very <laughs> clunkily implemented. And yeah. the... I think the range of buttons you have to use in this game on quick time events is really satisfying. Yeah. It's never the same buttons. They kind of mix up the yeah. sequences yeah, all the time. Do. So he's the toughest ranged enemy you've faced in the game up until that point. You've had people fire crossbows and stuff like that. So you, first of all, you got to fight Krauser at range. Then Krauser will attack you and initiate a quick time event with, and as like a knife fight. Now, the knife has already been a really, really important part uh, of Resident Evil 4 that it hasn't been in the other Resident Evils. In the other Resident Evils, one of the items you just get rid of as quickly as possible and never, ever use because it's so weak. So it's been well established in the game already, but then in the Krauser fight, it takes on a different um, form altogether because you need it for the quick time events. The knife is actually much more powerful against him than than it would be against a normal enemy. It's like ultra-powered against him, which is... Obviously, a nice touch because, because you fought with a knife exactly. before, and, it's, and the battle is that it's you, a knife fight you're having with yeah, him almost. If you're able to put two and two together, yeah, yeah. then you use that to your advantage because it is exceptionally powerful against him. Sort of knocks him back a bit, I think, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, I think it does. Him. Feels epic. Feels so satisfying once you finally won it. Oh, yeah, um, because again, it's an enemy that you have a real good reason to want exactly, to kill him. He's showing himself as a bit of a knobhead. I mean, even I mean, definitely not one of my favourite boss fights out of the game. But even the final fight against Sadler, yeah, I thought it worked pretty well. To be honest, the way that you could use the environment well, again exactly. to dive across the platforms and avoid him. And Classic try and, Resident try Evil as well, where you've got to fire a rocket launcher yeah, to, to finish, finish things, it off, yeah. to finish things off. Absolutely, just classic, yeah, classic. Really, Resident really Evil. well done. As with so many games, these kind of add-on games, these mini games, these bonus yeah. games. You often find that developers sort of overlook them. overlook them a bit. They stick it in there as an addition because they mm-hmm. want to add some extra game time to the game. Yeah. But they don't really pay the same attention they did as the main game. They're not no. really that fussed about it. And you can so usually just find an abundance Resident of Evil 5. <laughs> yeah, an abundance of things that are not that great about it. Yeah. Um, but for me, and I think you'll agree. Yeah. Everything about Mercenaries is just as perfect as the main game. If not more so. If not. It's more so. It's so yeah. Mercenaries is one of those things where it's kind of like you have this already amazing game and then they decided to just somehow really, really think about what makes the real the main game really, really fun and exciting mm. and then amp it up massively. No company is doing this kind of thing anymore. Mm. It's no like company. Instead, the online add-ons, mm. online tack-on yeah, shit that yeah. you pay for. It's just absolute crap. Look at Max Payne 3. All it had DLC was an add-on. And was an add-on mode and it's like, you know, Max Payne 1 had so many different difficulty levels and also how um, you'd play the game considerably diff- like, differently. Every game now has to have the, uh, some online multiplayer mode. Can I tell you how many online multiplayers I've played since this gen came out? Fucking oh, one I'm, game, I'm, I'm sure, I'm FIFA. Sure, I'm, the, I'm sure there'll be a uh, DLC pack mercenaries for Resi 7. Well, there was not doubt that you could, uh, Choose to play if you pay just £5, one off mm. payment. But yeah, Resident Evil 4's mercenary is nigh perfect. It is genuinely incredibly difficult, requires real tactics. Um, and you will be absolutely hooked. It stands as a it game. It is in so addictive to play because you just you know you are so close to being like the the differences between winning and losing in mercenaries are so minute. <laughs> it is so fine margins between winning and losing. That, that's it's, that's what's unbelievable isn't it? because so it stands exciting. as a game yeah. by itself. It really is. And what what's amazing is if that stands as a game by itself, 
they didn't even have to do it <laughs> because yeah. Resi 4 itself yeah. so <laughs> would have perfect. still been a 10 out of 10 game yeah. and one of the greatest games of all time <laughs> it's like, I but they decided the you know what we're not game. just going to settle for making the greatest game of this generation we're going to go a step further <laughs> we're going to make another great game on this game <laughs> and the character selection's great as well actually because the characters that either you've been intrigued with throughout the whole Resident Evil series or really caught your imagination in this particular game, you know, guys like Krauser, really badass, cool character, you know, totally different to other characters, great addition to have in there. Wesker, of course, the biggest badass ever in all the Resident Evil series. How yeah. great to actually be able to play as him now. Yeah. You know, to give him a go, he's got all these cool moves, which is another thing that's fantastic actually about the mercenaries, you know, each character has they've clearly spent time considering the character considering how they're going to work in different environments and really the fine details every character has these different um attack moves so when you shoot someone in the leg or the head like you would in the main game and they bend over and you've got you know you can press the a button to do a particular type of move every character's got a different move so hunk for instance is exceptionally good on the village level because the Chainsaw Bella sisters, you know, normally they're very, very difficult to kill. They're going to take a lot of ammo, but Hunt can neck break them and kill them in one if you place your shot carefully. Shot to the head, neck break are done. And by the same merit, Krauser is not very good on the village. His arrows don't seem to be very effective against the Bella sisters. Yeah. But on the shipyard level, which is what we're on now, the main guy on here, El Salvador, the big chainsaw geezer, the crazy chainsaw guy, um... You know, you can use Krauss's massive arm special move to just wipe yeah. him out in one. Krauss is also very good because he's only got one weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, no it's an interesting, it's very... interesting take on, yeah. you know, the Resident Evil formula, just having this one yeah. bow and arrow, bow and well. arrow weapon. Yeah, very, very interesting. So it makes it so that ammo for it is just always bow and arrow. Yeah, always bow and arrow. You're not going to run out of ammo for it kind of thing, you know, that's cause that is the only ammo. Um, but yeah, very interesting dynamic. It's much more difficult to aim with. Even though you've still got the red yeah. dot system, yeah. it seems much more difficult because of the angle that you're at when he's aiming it. You can't quite judge properly where the red dot sight's going. Um, but yeah, very very interesting character to play. It's also not great in take. terms of crowd control because you have to re you want to keep it for um, yeah, the like arm Leon for with a shotgun. Exactly, Leon's got a shotgun, whereas Krauser can really only take out one enemy at a time. Yeah. Same reason that Hunk's weak, but Hunk has also only got one weapon, so it's the only thing to focus on. Yeah. So if you can get good with that, you can get good with Hunk. Yeah. And Hunk's all about headshots, break, neck breakers, headshots, neck breakers, <laughs> just like yeah, constantly. Because yeah, exactly. you're immune during physical attacks. But that is, one, that is one aspect that I think they did great with by yeah. not... Oh man, it's good as mercenaries. Or like, the Jesus looking Christ. details because every level is different and the enemies, there is a character that is best suited to that level. Yeah. But the idea is that you still you get five star rating on every level with every character kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and get doing it with everyone. Isn't doing it? it with everyone is the difficulty. Yeah. I can five star any single level with yeah, any character yeah, yeah. quite comfortably oh, if God. I'm picking was the, the correct. Was that chance, or That's El Salvador. Get oh, do I do it? X. X to get your arm and then A to attack. Go. Nice. Nice. So as you see there, you know Krauser, this is his level. You know this is the one where you can five star this level with Krauser easier than you would with the other characters. Although this is markedly the most difficult. Yeah, it's definitely it's, the most difficult. It's, it's all difficult. Um, it's like, all difficult, you know. but um, this is... Kraus has got, probably got the best chance on this level, on yeah. it, than, um, than Although a very different, difficult level in general, because these crossbow guys are absolutely everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, me <laughs> That can yeah, happen at any point. Yeah. Um, you're not paying attention. <laughs> you're not paying attention, so yeah. It's, but fantastic but addition. incredibly fun. You also adds, want the time to add... It's all like... The part of the game is trying to live long enough to get the most points to get five stars but at the same time not going too long that you die and lose everything yeah it's, it's just incredible so you have to kind of once you've got the five star score it's about surviving and getting out of there when things are really getting on top of you mm -hmm. but yeah absolutely in terms of every character's got their own strengths and weaknesses now in a game where the gameplay elements are simply shooting and melee attacks and stuff like that to have such a versatile range of characters on you know I mean, think of it. I, I, you can think of games with more in-depth shooting um, than Resident Evil. I think, yeah. where you know the the shooting platforms has loads of different types of guns you can get and all this kind of stuff. 
but I really do feel like to have five different characters who are all good at certain things and play so perfectly with the gameplay that has been already established it's just genius and and just as a side like a it's side, just a side, side addition side to the game yeah. it's not even it's the, the main game. game it's not the, the main it's game like, at all they put so much thought into it as well because even the melee attacks have very pro profoundly different yeah, effects definitely. on the environment Wesker with his giant palm fist yeah. crowd control yeah. all you need to do is shoot one enemy boom, boom it crowd control the roll out of your way Whereas yeah. you ain't got that with Hunk. No, you it don't exist that crowd control, you know, he's gonna net break him. They'll knock him back a little bit, but it's not gonna do a lot. So you've got but, to be careful but when using it. Hunk gets proper grenades. So he can cause yeah. serious damage with grenades. So you use that for crowd control. <coughs> Whereas Krauser only gets flash grenades. Yeah. What's great as well is I think a lot of games you'll play something like God of War or Devil May Cry on a harder difficulty. Well they're not Devil May Cry because the harder difficulties are really rewarding and it genuinely becomes so hard. But a lot of games will just have harder difficulty levels that aren't particularly well conceived. Mm -hmm. um, God of War is literally health sponges. Yeah, like exactly. Like it's sponge. just you take more damage, they take less. Yeah. And it's basically like it's, it's not particularly well thought out. It's just how can we make this game really hard, <laughs> like for people to play. And to be honest with you, it's more of a tedious. It's more tedious than it is fun. I don't enjoy playing those games on harder difficulties because the game doesn't give you enough like event ev evasive maneuvers and stuff like that mm. a lot of the time when you're reading up on how to actually complete this stuff they'll just be like weird little hack thing you know like weird yeah. little glitches and stuff where oh this if you do this yeah, on this enemy it's just like stuff, yeah. you can trap enemies there and, and you know basically to get yourself through the game <laughs> mercenaries is so much fun mm. it's like it's so frustrating when you can't when you when you're dying when the chainsaw guy just one time all he has to do is catch you once <laughs> and you're dead and it's like you've got to constantly stay ahead. You know, you got to know when he's coming. You got to listen for it. Then you've got you've got to use everything in your surroundings. You constantly got to move. You got to plan which time capsules you're gonna to go to next, to next, to next, to next, to next. It is unbelievably thrilling. So I think they really managed to get the full package together with Resident Evil Four. And at the time when it came out, two thousand five, on the GameCube. This is unbelievable. We're play we've played through this today, and let me tell you, it it's still it's even, not aged a day. Even graphically, it looks it's, as good as yeah. anything. <laughs> it looks as good as anything, which only gets me unbelievably stoked for the HD release of it. Because if it looks this damn good on the GameCube from eleven years ago, <laughs> imagine this in HD. If it's exactly the same but HD, it's just. You know, it's going to be the best game around <laughs> if it's a re-release of the same game. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, guys. I've had a real blast discussing Resident Evil 4 today. But I am so excited for the sequel because I will be able to play it with my friend online. <laughs> oh, yes. So Resident Evil 5, I could not be more excited for because uh, it's two-player, which means double the players, double the fun. To review five accurately, it has to be compared to four because they're actually really similar. Yeah. And yet one, it's the predecessor as it happens, which should never be the case, is infinitely better. I think it's worth pointing out as well how strange it is that Nintendo had this exclusive. Resident Evil was, you know, one of the biggest franchises at this time. Mm. And when Resident Evil 5 came out, it's almost as if it took everything away from that. I haven't even played more than just the demo for Resident Evil 6. Played the demo, it was sh shocking. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, guys. There's a Resident Evil 6? <laughs> Chainsaw Man, run through, smash, blaze, the evil four. Yeah, the theme song.